a new character. That's actually the first character. They finally added more deck slots, which is absolutely a massive W. They've made it to where you can change your character and the deck you're using in between rematches, and it's so beautiful. However, there are still a few problems with Friends vs. Friends, and we're going to cover those while also praising the things that they've done great, of course. So, what's going on? It's Shake and Milk here. Intro. That's it. Done. So, again, I just want to say the swapping characters in between rematches and deck is probably my favorite change. It not only lets you swap up your deck if you're going up against a really sweaty team that takes your hardest deck and shit, but it also just adds a lot more variety to the gameplay, which I think is very understated how important it is of a change. Especially with how small of a community there is, some 1v1s can go for hours and hours, and not being able to swap deck or character was always a reason to end the 1v1s just so you could go do something different. With that not being a problem anymore, playing the game for long periods of times has become a lot easier. And just better in general, to be honest. Another great thing that has to do with the replayability in this game is the rework to the quest system as well. Which, all around, is a fantastic change. Absolute green thumbs up here. Before, there were daily and weekly quests. However, now, they've completely gotten rid of weekly, and there's only normal and daily. The daily quest, which resets every 24 hours, gives three of the red tokens, while the normal quest only gives one. And the normal quest, when completed, just re-rolls into new quests and is infinitely repeatable. And I fucking love this, okay? I will always love a change that's against time-gated resources like this. This is a fantastic change, and like, honestly, it just gives me hope for the future that a dev could think of such a beautiful change. Another fantastic thing that sort of leads into one of the bad things, which we'll get into later, is that they fixed the matchmaking problem. No more 5 to 15 minute queues. It's almost instantaneous every time. The second you want to play, you'll play. In the background right now, you're watching a 20 second-ish queue time, and this was at 5 a.m. for me, which is really impressive. Normally at around 5 a.m., you would need like 20 minutes to find someone, and now it's genuinely seconds. How this leads into the problem, though, is because it just puts anyone against anyone, practically. And this includes emerald ranks going up against papers. And now, initially, this sounds really shitty for new players, as it was the major problem before. You know, the sweatier or better players just absolutely dominating any new players because the skill gap or card level gap was simply way too large. So, the way the Friends vs. Friends developers countered this situation was certainly interesting. So, they added a perk system. Let's say I'm in Emerald and you just downloaded the game, which would mean you're in paper. I'm pretty sure that in a 1v1 scenario, you would have two buffs in this situation, and you would have two cards that are just permanently tied to your character for the rest of the match. And I think two is the most. I'm not sure if if you're purple and paper, you would get three, but I'm not sure. Initially, reading about this change, I thought it was going to be really shitty and that I wouldn't really like it. I, I honestly thought that this would, like, kill it a little bit. However, while playing with it a few times and sort of figuring out how it works, it actually can serve the purpose that it was designed for. And the way it works is at the very start of the match, depending on how big the gap in rank or level is in between players, it will calculate how many passive cards they deserve. And again, I think two, maybe three is the max for one person to get in a 1v1. I'm not sure. Now, it decides what cards to give them as a buff at complete random out of a certain pool of cards. So when it chooses those cards... They don't change for the whole game. So in some instances, you can go up against a double steel bullet and double vampire bullet on top of every card that the new player will use, which is fucking overpowered. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. It's an unwinnable situation. You know, like, even in the next round, like, it's still going to be double steel bullets and double vampire bullets. So you're just kind of fucked. And me and my friend actually went up against a really similar situation, and we had lost. But all the other matches that we fought against this specific duo, we won. Despite some of them being incredibly close. Now, when this paper duo got buffs that weren't really good, like more accuracy and smaller head, those games, 
me and my friend absolutely swept through them. So proving the skill gap problem from earlier. And this is why I say it sort of does the job it was made to do, because it turned from one of the games being really, really easy, and the next one we're fighting two fucking Dark Souls bosses that takes literal team comms and insane strategy to beat them. And to be honest, it was really fun. Now, I'm sure I don't even need to say it, but the big problem with this system is it's massively RNG-based. So though it can help turn the tide or balance it entirely, it never does one of those things consistently. Again, it's entirely RNG-based, so if you're on that lower elo team that's getting buffed, and you get not-so-good buffs, it will still take a lot of effort to win that match, especially if you're going up against scary competitors. So with that being said, it's entirely up to you on what kind of opinion you want to form on this whole new perk system. Again, at first, it just kind of looks like a shitty choice, but in practice, I'm kind of leaning into liking the change a bit more. Also, the new map is fucking great. You know, I'm not going to lie, I don't think that they've released a single map I've hated. Like, honestly, all the maps are very unique. They have incredible gimmicks, like one, or like Theater, which is absolutely my favorite map. But digress, right? The new map is called Mommy Museum. And it's a three-story building, very vertical, which I like, because the only other map with three floors previously was technically Theater. And this one, this new one, expanded on the whole concept a lot more. Also, I don't know why, really, but I love these windows that you can't smash here, especially the one where you're staring down your opponent at the beginning. I just very much fuck with this map. Now, if I'm going to suggest at all what the next update should be, or I guess just to mention a few more things that are still wrong, is definitely the opening packs being way too slow. I've got like over 150 packs just unopened, despite having some cards not max level. The only reason I haven't opened them is because it takes forever. Now, before, I used to open them in queue. When I was sitting in queue for like five minutes, you know, I'd, I'd open like ten of them. But... Now that there is no queue, you know, I kind of can't do that anymore. But look, if this video gets a decent amount of views, like the last Friends vs. Friends one, I'm sure someone on the dev team is possibly watching this right now. So I just want to say, I love your work, I love you, I love the video game you've made, and Roberto Mulligan jokes will literally permanently be scarred into me and my friends group stroke routine. I mean, I fucking love Roberto Mulligan. So... I, I don't know. That, that's really about all I have to say about this new update. Other than the fact I'm still highly disappointed we can't, like, jump on top of the Cassius Corner sign and many other places in the hub alongside not being able to see your friends in the hub, too. But I guess we just got to be happy with what we've got, you know? And, and those changes, I guess, are minimal, but it still would add a lot to the game. But... You know, I kind of feel like I fell out of the game a bit before these updates. Uh, I stopped playing. However, recently, that Friends vs. Friends spark in me has been growing a little bit more every day. And I'm hoping that this game just continues in the fantastic direction it's going in. And I hope it gets some of the player, ba player base back on its feet. I've been Shaken Milk. Thank you so much for watching.